It's Millie, and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time to go over my best books from 2022. and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another end of the year type of video and I'm going to be going over my favorite books from 2022. So I'm not only going to be talking about the favorite books from 2022, but I am also going to be talking a little bit about some of the books that were the most surprising for me in a good way and some that were not the most disappointing ones. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to be starting off by going over these four different genres. These are my most read genres, and I've compiled a top five list for every genre. So it was a little bit hard for some of these to narrow it down to just five books, um, but for some of these, the list was actually pretty easy. So I'm going to be going with my most read genre, which is fantasy to start off with. So this is my top five for adult fantasy and YA fantasy. Um, I tended to enjoy more of the adult fantasy that I read this year versus the YA fantasy, but there are some mentions from both demographics. So starting off at number five, we have Down Among the Six and Bones by Shauna McGuire, and this is the second book in the um, Wayward Children series. So this is a series of novellas that follow several characters who are able to transport to these other worlds and their journeys as they come back from these fantastical worlds. This is the second book in the series, and we're following um, our two main characters, Jack and Jill, and we get their origin story. So these novellas you do read in a certain order, but for the second book this one is more of a origin story for these two characters, and I found that I absolutely loved this novella. It was my favorite of the series thus far, and Jack and Jill as characters are so fascinating to follow, and I just really really enjoyed myself with this series first of all and I just love the second book the most out of all of them. Coming in at number four we're gonna go with Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. So as you guys know I finally decided to conquer the Throne of Glass series and finish it off. I had so much reservations with getting to read the final seventh book and you guys are gonna hear all my thoughts about it in my reading vlog specifically tailored to reading the end of this series but I have to put a Sarah J Maas book on here and this was one of the only two that I ended up reading this year at the very end but this one is coming in at number four. Number three is going to be Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. This is a YA fantasy book. We're following um, our main character who has decided to take the identity of someone else and she crossed the wrong god and has now been cursed. So this was a YA fantasy book that I was reading for a Is It Worth the Hype series and so it wasn't initially on my radar, but I ended up loving this book. I love our main character. She is so egocentric and sassy, and I loved following this cat and mouse journey between her and the junior detective that's on her case. Um, and it's just one that I know I'm going to reread, and I'm so excited for the sequel to be coming out in 2023. All right, and we have a tie for first place. So if you guys recall from my best books of 2021, I also had a tie for first place and I had The Wolf of Ornyaro and The Jasmine Throne. I could not pick between the two books. And once again, I am left with two books. I cannot pick which one I like more. And you guys are gonna see a very familiar title. So um, we have The Wolf of Ornyaro and The Ruin of Kings tied for first place. So I ended up rereading this first book and continuing on with the trilogy. I read all three books, absolutely loved them, gave five stars to all three, and this is definitely one of my favorite new fantasy series of all times. So I had to put it back on the list again because I did reread it and it was still just as amazing as the first time around. And we have The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. Um, this was my first year reading this book, but I ended up reading it twice this year. So I read it initially in July, and then I reread it in November to continue on with the series. And both times it was absolutely amazing. This is also going to be one of my new favorite fantasy series of all times, and I'm so happy to be continuing on with the series in 2023. So I had a really hard time picking between the two. Um, if you guys had seen my previous video, the Battle of the Books tournament style video, um, this one ended up winning. But honestly, between the two, like it, it was an impossible choice. And these are both tied for first place in my heart. 
All right, now moving on to the second category, we're going to go with sci-fi. I ended up reading a lot of sci-fi and I was just really kind of diving into the genre and trying to get a feel for what I really like in sci-fi. And so there was a lot of exploration and kind of seeing a lot of hit and misses. But these were the top five that I enjoyed for this year. So number five is The Past is Red by Catherine M. Valente. I am really shocked to be seeing this one in my top five list because I did not think that this one was going to be one of my favorites at all when I first initially read it, but I cannot forget this story. It is so haunting. It's a dystopian novella and we're following a main character who is just so ignorantly blissful of her life and we as the readers are reading in between the lines and seeing the horrifying truth of her life in this futuristic world where she's living in garbage town and honestly this story has stuck with me and it's left such a lasting impression and so it has made it into my top five for the sci-fi category. Number four we have Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This one is a Asian inspired sci-fi story set in California in San Gabriel Valley and we're following three different Asian coded characters whose journeys get intertwined and it involves making deals with devils and violin prodigies and um, space alien wars and donuts, of course. It's such a weird book, but so emotional and powerful and moving. And I definitely think it's a really good solid read. And I ended up giving this one a 4.5 and then it's made its way to the top four. For number three, we have a Brandon Sanderson book. So as you guys know, I have been reading from the Skyward series, um, which is a YA sci-fi series. And I am all the way caught up to all of the books that have been published. So I have read about, I want to say five or six books from the series this year. And one of them has made the list. It's actually the last one that I read, which is the 3.5 novella, Evershore. So um, I like his novels, but I really like his novellas. And I think Evershore is the strongest out of all the novellas in this series. It has the right amount of character development and plot and emotional impact. And I absolutely enjoyed reading this. I've been enjoying reading the series so far, but this one is definitely my favorite from the series, and so I wanted to mention it for my top five. Coming in at number two, we have All Systems Read by Martha Wells. You guys knew there was going to be a Murderbot Diaries book on this list, and so far All Systems Read, which is the first book in the series, has been my favorite. Um, nothing can beat getting introduced to Murderbot, our sassy title character, who is just trying to stay away from humans and ends up being caught in all of their shenanigans. And he just wants to sit back and watch trashy reality TV shows and I can relate. I absolutely am loving this series. I'm so happy to be continuing it into 2023. And All Systems Red is definitely one of my favorite novellas of all times. And coming in at number one, this one was a completely unexpected pick. I didn't think I was gonna be reading this book this year. Um, and I'm really actually happy that it just got on my radar due to a different video series where my friends pick my reading for the week. Um, if not, I would have never discovered this book. And that is Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. This is a really campy adult soap opera sci-fi book. We're following a ragtag group of humans and aliens as they're trying to, you know, escape from this, like, organization, this crime syndicate, and we have just the most amazing characters, and it's so campy and just cheesy, and I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to continue with the series, but this one has definitely been my favorite sci-fi so far, and I'm realizing that I think I really do like campy soap opera sci-fi books. All right, now moving on to the third genre, we are going to be talking about romance. So I have been reading a lot of adult romance this year. I've been on my journey as I'm trying to figure out which adult romance I like. I've been indulging in the more like wholesome rom-com romances that you generally think of with the illustrated covers. And I've also been diving into some smutty romance and Kindle Unlimited romance. So I've definitely experimented a lot and have broaden my horizons when it comes to romance. So this one was really hard to narrow down to just five, but here are my top five romance books of the year. So coming in at number five, we have The Charm Offensive by Alison Cotram. This is a debut novel and we're following this male-male romance um, involving a alternate universe bachelor and it has a lot of mental health representation. I thought this was a really sweet rom-com. It was a five stars. It just 
felt so perfect and wholesome and emotional and as a Bachelor fan I absolutely loved all of the jabs towards the Bachelor franchise. I thought it was very very accurate and overall I just had so much fun reading this book and I can't wait to read some more from this author in the future. All right for number four we have a very unexpected romance. I didn't think I was going to love this book as much as I did but it blew my mind and that was The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is kind of your typical cliche adult romance book and I thought that it was going to be you know so so or I might not even like it and I found myself falling in love with the characters and falling in love with the story. It's definitely one of the most enjoyable office romances that I read this year and it captured my heart. Coming in at number three is arguably my most enjoyable read of the year of all the books that I've read and this book will forever remain in my heart and I can never forget the series because it is so iconic for my reading journey. We knew it was going to show up on this list. I'm talking about Hate, the first book in the Madison Kate series by Tate James. This was my diving into Kindle Unlimited um, for the first time and I have an entire movie length video with spoilers as I read this series for the first time. It was a wild ride. I enjoyed every step of it and the first book always remains the most iconic to me. Um, it is trashy and problematic and dark questionable romances but I absolutely love this first book. I love the series. I'm going to continue reading from Tate James in the future. There is no doubt about it. It has to be on this list. Coming in at number two is a late addition to the game and that is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. So I ended up picking this up this book because it was on the Goodreads Choice Awards and the top 20 nominees um, and this one was the premise that intrigued me the most and it also had the highest rating out of all 20 nominees and so I was really intrigued to pick up this book and I absolutely fell in love with it. It is like a typical cliche rom-com storyline about a city girl and a small town boy and their two worlds and they collide but it was just great. It was perfect. It had all of the emotional feel and it really really resonated with me and I'm so excited to be picking up some more Abby Jimenez into the next year but this one is definitely number two. And uh, last but not least we have number one and nobody is surprised to hear that it's Emily Henry. I love my romance queen Emily Henry and we of course have to shout out her latest book which is Book Lovers that came out this year and it is my number one romance. Like Emily Henry books are, they just feel like a warm hug for me. They're so nostalgic. I know that when I pick up one of her romance books, I'm going to absolutely love it. And she is forever the romance queen in my heart. So number one goes to book lovers. All right, guys, moving on to the next category, which is contemporary. Just a heads up, they are mowing outside in the streets. So I apologize if you guys can hear some of that in the background. I've like closed all the windows and closed all the doors, but we shall see if the camera picks it up. All right, so moving on to contemporary. So contemporary is kind of open to YA contemporary and adult contemporary, but a lot of the adult contemporary that I end up reading ends up for the most part being romance contemporary and so I put majority of them in the romance category. There are a couple of handfuls that are just like regular contemporary that have minimal to little romance in it but unfortunately I didn't find any adult ones that I really enjoyed that much to be on this list and I ended up not reading that much Y contemporary. Now before in previous years that has been one of my most read categories but this year I really struggled to kind of pick it up and find the motivation and also find ones that I really enjoyed. So for my contemporary top five it's actually going to be just a top three and all of them are Y contemporaries. So without further ado let's get started. All right in third place we have a Laura Taylor Namey book and my favorite one from all the ones that I've read from her so far has been When We Were Them. So this is her latest release this follows three best friends who are in their last week of senior year and one of our friends has betrayed the others and it flashbacks to show the evolution of their friendship and kind of leads you on this murder not murder mystery on this mystery to try to figure out what she did to betray her friends and kind of what led to her decisions and how the friendship can go from here on out if it's going to survive or not. This one I was not expecting to love as much as I did. I went into it, you know, with good feelings about it, 
and it left me an emotional wreck and left me like sobbing at the end of this book. So this one was definitely such a good read and this is so underrated. If you like hard-hitting emotional why contemporary then you should definitely pick up this book number two was when you get the chance by emma lord now i absolutely love emma lord as a why contemporary author she writes really realistic but also wholesome why contemporaries where i'm following teenage characters that feel authentic and are not annoying and i genuinely enjoy following along on their journeys and I feel like her books have so many different layers and messages to them and I always enjoy picking up her work. So her latest book that came out this year was When You Get the Chance. We're following our main character titled Millie who um, is trying to find who the identity of her real mother in this reverse Mamma Mia Broadway inspired journey. It's a crazy ride. I absolutely love it. Highly recommend. All right, and for number one, we have The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. So this one is also a debut novel, and I absolutely fell in love with this story. It is, you know, a journey of queer identity. We have our main character who is lesbian, but is keeping that a secret in order to keep her family intact. And she gets sent to this private Catholic school with her brother and has to basically make sure that she does not get revealed or outed as queer, but that becomes a problem when the only openly queer girl at her school ends up becoming her best friend and potential crush. This one was such a good story. It made me feel so emotional. I also cried while reading this book and I'm so excited to be reading some more from this author in the future. All right, guys, so those were the top five for these different categories of genres that I read. And now we're going to go into my top five most surprising books and top five most disappointing. So we're going to start off with the most disappointing in order to end this video on a positive note. So in terms of most disappointing, these were not the most like lowest rated books that I read. These weren't any of like my DNF's most hated books. These were just books that I had really high um, expectations for. I was highly anticipating and these are the ones that kind of let me down the most. Um, so I will include what my star rating was and some of these books aren't necessarily bad. You guys might still like them, but in terms of me and my reading preference, these ones were the most disappointing for me. So coming in at number five, we have a book that I never pictured to be on this list. We have The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. So I almost DNF this book. Actually, I did DNF this book. I could not get through reading it physically. And I got the audiobook. I borrowed it for a couple days and that helped me finish the second half of this book so that it wasn't a complete DNF. But I struggled so much with reading this book and I have come to the realization that I am not into dark academia. It's just not my subgenre of fantasy. It's not my thing. I'm not really into kind of the high pretentious writing style and the pretentious character tropes with the whole like academic scholar kind of vibe. I do like the, the dark aspect, the atmosphere of it, but I just can't get behind the characters. I was so bored while reading this book and so this was a five star prediction and unfortunately it I only gave it three stars barely um but I'm not continuing with the series and I'm so sad to see this on my most disappointing list all right coming in at number four we have a book that I read at the beginning of the year it's an adult romance that I did not predict was going to be on this list and that is take a hint Danny Brown by Talia Hilbert so I read Get a Life Chloe Brown the year before and it was one of my favorite adult romances of the year. I absolutely loved it. Now every book in this series has been extremely polarizing. People either love it or hate it and people have different feelings about all of the books in the series. So I went into the first one you know being aware of that and I absolutely fell in love with it. I It gave me five stars. I loved it. I went into the second one also having high hopes and thinking that it was going to work for me and I was shocked that it didn't. So I ended up giving this book only two stars. I really liked the writing and the humor that was really familiar from the first book. However, I just didn't like the main characters. I didn't like Danny as our main character to follow and I didn't like her love interest. I just didn't like their personalities and so it was really hard rooting for them and their romance and it was just... A drag to finish this book. So unfortunately it didn't work for me. I don't even know if I'm going to be picking up the third book in the series either. I have no idea but this one just 
didn't work for me. All right, so the third book is no surprise um, to people uh, that it's on this list. And we're going to be talking about The Spanish Love Deception. So this is a adult romance book that I picked up in the middle of the year. This one is also a polarizing book. It got a lot of popularity from TikTok and people were really hyping up this book. I had heard um, that there were some problematic or just like badly written aspects of this book that would make me not enjoy it. But the premise of it was so interesting so I wanted to give it a try. Um, I honestly thought that I was going to be pretty neutral about this book and give it like a 3 or 3.5 and so it was shocking to me of how much I disliked reading this book. I ended up giving it two stars. It was a very generous two stars um, and I just really did not enjoy this book out of romance at all. Um, you guys can go and check out that video where I just kind of rant all my feelings about this book but uh, yeah it was one of my least favorite romances that I read the entire year um, and very disappointing. All right, number two. I have talked about this book numerous times over the years, so hopefully this is going to be the last time I bring up this book in a negative light, um, but I'm talking about Iron Widow. So this is a debut novel. It's a sci-fi fantasy book. I read it back in January of 2022. Um, I had high expectations for this book. It was a five-star prediction, and it just didn't work for me. I did not like this book at all, and I was really sad because I had such high hopes for it. Um, I've talked numerous times about kind of just my negative experience with this book so I'm not going to rehash over those details again and I've already unhauled the book so I don't have a physical copy here as well but yeah it just it didn't work for me on many many levels I know other people still really love this book um but yeah it was definitely one of my most disappointing reads of this year and last but not least, we're talking about our number one most disappointing book, and that is Fireheart Tiger. So this is a Asian-inspired novella. It is only at 90 pages. And I had this book as a five-star prediction, and this was my lowest rated book of the year at 1.5. I did not like this book at all. I, I don't have any positive things to say about this book. I have read from this author before and I gave her book four stars. So I have liked this author in, in previous books, but this one just did not do it for me. And I feel like I got nothing from it and I want my time back that I, I wasted reading this book. I just did not like it at all. And that's why it's number one as my most disappointing book of 2022. All right, so let's end this video in a positive way. So I'm going to be talking about the top five most surprising books. I had very low expectations for these books, or I didn't necessarily pick out these books. These were books chosen kind of for me for different video series that I was doing over the year. But I was surprised by how much I enjoyed these books and how highly I rated these books. So some of these are going to be familiar because they ended up on top five lists from other categories categories so let's go ahead and get started. So number five is In the Ravenous Dark. This is a YA fantasy standalone and this one was picked for me um, as one of the books to read for Is It Worth the Hype video series and I expected to either give this one like a three star or possibly DNF it. It is a fantasy story that involves blood magic and that is usually something that I have been squeamish at from before and it's not really one of my favorite kind of magical uses in fantasy and so I did not think that I would really like this one that much um but I was surprised I really enjoyed this book um there's some plot twists that I can't talk about because it would be spoilers but it included some more elements of fantasy that I don't like but I surprisingly enjoyed it with this book and it ended up being one of my favorite reads from that month so um, this was definitely a surprise and I ended up giving it five stars. Next up at uh, number four we have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. So um, I already talked about this in my top five fantasies. Um, I also had very low expectations for this book. It was another book that I was reading for Is It Worth the Hype series and I thought I was going to give this one three stars. That was my initial prediction. Um, the synopsis was kind of like okay I had never read from this author before and so I just had very like little to no expectations with this book but as you guys know I ended up falling in love with it it was one of my top favorite fantasy books of the year and I give it five stars. Number three is another familiar book which is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. So like I had mentioned um, I had low expectations for this romance book. It is a lot of people's favorite romance books and I just thought it would be kind of boring for me and I didn't think that I would enjoy it as much as I did but I really enjoyed my time reading this book and I just it it was such a good experience and it was so surprising that I loved it as much as I did. All right, number two, 
is a series that I never thought I would be reading from. And if you guys have seen that video, then you guys will understand how shocked I am <laughs> to be saying this series out loud. And that's the Wayward Children series by Shonda McGuire, specifically book one, Every Heart a Doorway. So as you guys are aware, I'm not a huge fan of Portal Fantasy, and so many people have hyped up this series and have said such marvelous things about it, and I was like, I'm sure it's great, but it's just not my thing. And I ended up reading the entire series, or majority of that has been published so far, um, in preparation for reading the Hugo 2022 novella nominations. And I found myself falling in love with the series and really, really enjoying it. So I am like putting the first book in the series as the number two spot, but it's really like the whole series that's being nominated for this. I'm so surprised that I love the series so much and I can't wait to continue with it for the next year. And last but not least, we have number one, which was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, which is a YA adult, depending on what country you're in, um, Asian-inspired fantasy story. So this is another one for Is It Worth the Hype kind of video series. It was a book that was chosen for me from the Mysterious Galaxy box, and so I didn't necessarily pick it out. I kind of thought going into it that it was like overhyped and maybe overrated because everybody was talking about the cover of the book versus the content of the book. Um, and so I just didn't really have like any expectations for the book and I was like, well, I own it. I might as well read it during Asian Heritage Month and let's see how it goes. And I fell in love with this book. It was one of my favorite fantasy books. It almost made it in the top five um, category. And I just really liked this book. And I was shocked by how much I ended up enjoying it. And I've been recommending it to so many people. And I'm so excited to be continuing on with the sequel for this duology. Alright guys, so that is it for my best books of 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very quick kind of like recap of my reading year with some of my favorites and least favorite books. Um, and as well as like reaffirming that these are my top three favorite genres, which are fantasy, sci-fi, and romance. I'm gonna end the video here now because as you guys can probably hear, my voice is going from talking so much. <laughs> so I'm gonna go take a break. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as well as the rest of my end of the year videos that are coming out in the last week of December and the first week of January. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys had a good holiday season and are enjoying the new year. Alright guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a likes and thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read any of these books and what were your thoughts and what were some of your favorite books from 2022. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish content, please be sure to subscribe for some more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye!